So I will talk about uh, the problem 13, about uh, mapping on uh, the QSN and uh, ordinary uh, uh, icosahedral uh, quasi-crystal in 3D, and uh, mainly the 36 vertex step, which is a D6 quasi-crystal on which uh, Dugan is also working. Uh, so, but in fact, um, I enlarge the domain. I will not focus only on this problem, but on a general problem, which includes this one, but will be extended, and which is in fact the problem that you, you asked uh, just uh, during your presentation about studying everything who has H2, H3, and H4 symmetry. Every structure who has this symmetry and you told us that this is linked to Dirichlet integer, and I will try to demonstrate and show how, and then to use the Dirichlet integer to uh, give new light on uh, all this object and symmetry, and as an example, we will have this. Uh, so, um, it will appear a uh, kind of unification of geometry, algebra, and curiously, also number theory. And you will understand really uh, clearly from where it comes. What I will do is uh, globally using six dimensional spheres interconnected with the Z6 uh, integer lattice and project this to 3D by using algebraic numbers. But uh, this is what we do to get the QSN. Uh, and to map the QSN to the other. But in fact, the method is also working in two dimensions and in uh, four dimensions. So, um, by, by 60 spheres, you mean L, uh, S5, right? No. No? 60 uh, spheres? It's a sphere in six dimensions. Uh, so it's, it's S5. S5. It's not S5. Five, 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 five spheres. Sphere. Five spheres. It's five spheres, yes. Mm. Okay. It's spheres in 6D. Mm. Uh, yes, it's good to precise. <laughs> um, and uh, during this, we can, we will be able to understand the quasi-crystal and to classify them. So this is what is really new, a new way, which is uh, really uh, uh, well justified, well uh, st with strong roots of classify classifying the quasi-crystal because. We have seen during this study that this is difficult. In fact, uh, especially the D6 family of quasi-crystal, it's not uh, very clear. Uh, there is many different way of tiling it. So in fact, computing the vertex is quite uh, uh, canonical, but then uh, making the tile is not. Uh, it's more easy with this Z6 or the but with D, it's already complicated. And if we want to understand what appears, what is done with E for the E8 quasi-crystal, try to see if the Elzer Sloan quasi-crystal uh, belongs to a family or if it is alone. Uh, so better uh, we have to understand really D6 before and then to go to the next dimension. But all the tools that I provide here are automatically working on all the dimensions. Uh, and I will screw light, uh, scale light on the QSN and answer some of your question. So this simple shape explain everything. This is about intersecting grids and spheres. I say spheres in the general dimension, so it's circles in a plane. And you recognize we have a grid. And I draw the circle uh, to embed all the points of the grid, all the circles to which the grid belongs. Uh, so this is done with this uh, simple code for this one. Uh, we set the point size and we have a table of points uh, for different value of i and j as a grid. And we just draw the circle centroid of this with a radius which is square root of r. Uh, but you see that r has this list of number 1, 2, 4, 5, 8, 9, 10. 
Why there is no three or six or seven? Because there is some missing circle here, uh, which are circle in the series. So in fact, uh, all these circles belong to a family of circles where the square square of the radius is an integer. It should be one, two, ten. But some are missing. Uh, this is the first interesting property in 2D. And uh, it's a property which is related to number theory. Mm -hmm. So then I made another code, which is not here. Yes? So, uh, I mean, the <coughs> you are, does the, the R is the radius square? Yeah, on the left side, right? So right? The R, you, the R are the integers, but yes, the R is not the is radius. Yes, R is the square of the radius. The radius square, okay. That's yes. why they can be integer. Yes. Otherwise, they, they're not integer. <laughs> That's why I do this. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and, then, and, then the, and then also there is, a, I noticed like the layer one has four point, the layer two has four point, and then layers, not every layer has four point. No. There is it's a multiple of fours. Yes, right. some have okay. eight, some have Wait, zero. Wait, how do you know? This is the next slide. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you really have integrated this. And then the next slide. Oh no, this is not this one, sorry. This is this one. With this one, we know this. It has been studied by uh, Jacobi, a mathematician. And uh, what we want is uh, this sequence. 4, 4, 0, 4, 8, 0, 0, 4, 4, 8. This sequence is the number of points in each of this uh, circle of radius R2. It's periodic? No. It's not repeating? No. So it's an a, that, that's an aperiodic pattern? Uh, yes, and uh, it's linked to division. So this is what uh, I tried to explain the formula that was found by uh, Jacobi, is that this is named R2n. This is a function R2 uh, because uh, I'm in two dimension and depending of n. And uh, the, the expression of this function could be four times, because all is multiple of four, you see, and then an, um, an, an integer, which in this way is a little complicated, but you will see in another way it's more simple, but this is a sum for d divide n. So you have to compute all the divider of n, my numbers, so you, and this is why it is linked to number theory. Because for example, when n is a prime number, it has only one divider, it will be simple. So the prime number will have specific uh, value here. And there is different theorem on this in number theory. This looks like what Klee wants to do on the panels telling each, each shell. I, I have done this also on the panel. Oh, you have done this also? Yes, yes. Okay. Right, so, uh, no, thank you for this because this mm -hmm. is fascinating. So it's no surprise that you're getting an aperiodic signature like this because you're, you're using an irrational number, pi. You're combining it with an integer associated object, the Z2 lattice. Uh, but I didn't expect it, but it's not surprising because you're involving mm -hmm. pi. But my question is... No, um, no, no, but the same Inside of the sign does not indicate a. Uh, yes, uh, yes, in fact, this is a. No, it's an angle. Ge no, geometrically, you're using a circle. And yes, so you've but got this, pi. Right, this right, value, it, uh, it sinus sign of pi, pi d, over two, then, over okay. two will uh, have uh, only uh, one or minus one or zero okay. as a value. So, so my question. So it's pi is, yeah. uh, is there, but uh, should not be there. It's just a way of N writing no, this no, in no, only I wasn't talking formula. about that. I was mm -hmm. talking about the U pi in the circle. Yes. No. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it, it's acting as a transformer, or it's acting. Yeah, it's acting as a transformer in some sense on this set first object, the the periodic integer lattice. So here are my two questions. Number one, and let me ask them both before you mm -hmm. answer. Number one is. It appears that there may be rules in this aperiodic sequence. For example, I do not see any repetition uh, like with long, long. In a, in a, quasi, in a 1D quasi-crystal, you can't have two longs in a Fibonacci chain. 
I see that there's 0, 0, 4, 4, and 0, 0, but there I don't see in this short string any 0, 0, 0. So it makes me mm -hmm. wonder, is there some matching rules like in a Fibonacci chain? My second question is, can you please do a Fourier transform on this sequence and tell me if it has discrete Bragg peaks? Yes. Thank you. I can do this. We ah. have here also a way which is more easy to understand to compute this. If I say that d1 of n is the number of dividers of n which are congruent to one modulo 4. You remember uh, when we worked together with the uh, prime numbers, yeah. we were using the prime modulo 6, yeah. which were 1 or 5 modulo 6. Yes. Here what is important is modulo 4 and also to be 1 or 3 modulo 4. And uh, okay. So we are counting. To compute this value, we are just uh, listing all the div dividers of n, and then we are selecting only the one which are congruent to 1 modulo 4 is one number, d1 of n, and the other, which are congruent to 3, is named d3 of n, and if we compute 4 times d1 minus d3, we get this number for every n. So we have a, a direct formula but it involves the number of dividers of n and number theory. So can I tell you why I want you to do the diffraction pattern for mm -hmm. me and tell me if it's fast, I'd like it's, you know, if it's fast, just want it. But the reason I want it is because, as I said today, there are three and only three ways to order things periodically, mm -hmm aperiodically and disorderly. You claim that this is aperiodic, but a if it's not periodic, it could mean that it's disorderly or that it's, it's orderly. If it's orderly, it'll have discrete Bragg peaks in the Fourier transform. And if it has discrete Bragg peaks, which defines the orderliness, it means there are ordering rules and syntactical freedom in the ordering rules because the syntactical freedom makes it uh, makes it aperiodic. Oh, there is no syntactic freedom. It is perfectly determined, yeah. but there is many ordering rules. Okay, so what? So yeah, do that for me because if it's a quasi crystal mm -hmm. as exhibited by discrete Bragg peaks, mm -hmm. um, it's really it's really cool, <laughs> you know, with such a simple way of taking circles and putting it on a you know on an integer yes. lattice. And this is just our first step inside of number theory, but you will see uh, with the end of the presentation. And just this after, there is many more. So Ray, uh, mm, what is it? What is it, the person since Moody and someone else did it the mm. number theory on, on E8, the, the layering, the shelling? Oh, yes, yes. So is it going to be the McKay similar McKay thing? Be yes, similar. Because he, he also has this, uh, is, did, he, did he also use like, a, is it like a prime, it's, it's something related to prime number? Right. Yes, uh, there is a similar function that I will show after, uh, the Jacobi elliptic function. So oh, so you're going to connect it to new. his result or no? Yes, because he, he just uh, used this result for uh, Z8, so for oh. uh, 8 dimension. For Z8? Z. Z8, but... Uh, but you can induce... He also did the E8. The he also did E8, which, 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 which is derived from the one from E8. Yeah, these yeah. 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 shells, you can, you can relate it to the theta function. I mean, he's going to talk about oh, that. Okay. Yes. So, so yes, now there is a, a more easy and general function which is uh, connected to the theta function, which is this one, theta 3, the set Jacobi theta function. Th this character, which is like a V, in fact, it's a theta, a strange theta, not the one we are using uh, generally, but this is a second possibility. Theta? It's a theta. <laughs> the, theta. Theta, yeah. Theta, yeah. I say theta, but then you don't understand me, so <laughs> theta. <laughs> the real name is theta. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, and then uh, when you decompose uh, theta of uh, Q to the square, you give, uh, so in fact, you, you take the Taylor expansion of theta to the Q, and which is an infinite polynomial. Then you square it, this polynomial, then it reorders uh, the coefficient, and then uh, the coefficient of x to the power n is R2 of n. So all these numbers are the successive uh, uh, coefficient of the Taylor development, Taylor function development of this function, which is the square of the theta 3 function. 
And this formula I will show is general for all the n. So it's a very powerful, but quite difficult to compute, but uh, very easy with Mathematica. Uh, but here I will show you another way to compute this uh, by hand, because it's good to <laughs> compute a little by hand. So uh, it's just solving this equation, x2 plus y2 equals 0, uh, 1, and so with integer solution, so it's a Diophantin equation, the simplest possible. So here for zero, the solution is zero, zero, one solution. Uh, it's not in this list. Here for one, uh, this, we, we have these two solutions, zero and plus or minus one, or we can reverse uh, these four points air solution of this equation. In fact, this is the intersection of the circle of radius one with the grid, the four point. This is the four here. The next, for two, we have the diagonal solution, plus or minus one and plus or minus one. If you take the sum of the two square, it will make two. And because I have two signs who can change, I have four solution, which is the four here. And then for x2 plus y2 equals three, no one can solve it. So there is zero solution. Uh, x2 plus y2 equals 4, this is more easy. Uh, you take the solution from here and you multiply by 2 and the square is 4, so it's good. We have 4 solutions, this 4. 5, then this is a little more smart. You have to add 1 to the square of 2. 1 and 4, it's 5. And you can do this in 8 different ways. So when you begin to mix uh, different numbers, which are not zero, one, two, two, then the number here will become more complicated and bigger. And in fact, this is linked to the number of divider of the number n here. And that's the maximum you can do. You um, can't have more than eight. You just prove oh, no, 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 eight is not the maximum. No, no, I, I can go to infinite. Oh, uh, okay. Yes. It's just that uh, I stopped here. Oh, uh, yeah, because this number <laughs> is small, so that's why you, that's, that's small. If it's a bigger number, then there is a multiple solutions. Wow. Yes, there is, okay. you will see we, when I increase the dimension, then. Oh, mercy. I go to 3D, for example. Yeah. Uh, I will have more solution. So, for example, no, for but in 2D, will you have more, uh, more solutions as well? Ah, more solutions as well, where, where the radius is uh, uh -huh. growing. Yes, naturally, okay. yes. Okay. Yes. This is really unexpected. Basically, that's this connection to number theory is really oh, yes, unexpected. Yes. Basically, it means that if a number can be broken into, uh, a square of a number can be broken into the sum of other squares, mm -hmm. like how many of them, how many uh -huh. ways of uh, yeah. two other squares. Right. So, so, because they're just different things, your solution count and then your geometric thing, mm -hmm. and yet and yet they're implying one another. So it's yes, really different view of the same. So this is yeah. really the unification Convert, yeah. of algebra and geometry right. with this so simplest object. And then number theory. So I, I would like to predict that you're going to come up with a discrete Bragg peaks in your Fourier transform. And if that's the case, mm -hmm. then I know we can debate this, but if it has discrete Bragg peaks, it correlates to some cut plus projection operator on some hyper lattice to the one dimension. So your Bragg peaks, the distribution maps to a, to a quasi crystal cut and projection. And that's even deeper, <laughs> you know, that, <laughs> that'll link it into quasi crystals. So I'm excited if you do that for your transform. Yeah, and yes. it goes back to because solutions of this form give you an algebraic variety. So then you're, you're linking it back to, yeah, mm -hmm. like Fermat's last theorem the proof of it, mm -hmm. right? You have a modular form mm -hmm. and for every modular form you have, you have a corresponding elliptic curve. Yes. But of course, this is going to go into higher, oh, higher, hi higher algebraic. Yes. Yeah. Instead of <laughs> just an elliptic curve, you can mm -hmm. have an, a higher algebraic variety. Mm -hmm. So this goes even to uh, that deep correspondence between number theory and geometry. Mm -hmm. That's at the forefront of mathematics right now. Oh, yes. Yes. Right. But right. here we begin from where mm -hmm. it's really easy, but from where it emerged, naturally. Yeah, by but it goes, <laughs> it will goes to Riemann hypothesis, although it goes to something very big. We will see this. Which, by the way, Ray, just everybody, so remember what I said earlier, which is that the 
um, the quasi crystal in 1D called the um, the mysterious um, Wigner's mysterious universality signature. This shows up in number theory in the distribution of primes and in the distribution of non-trivial zeta zeros. So it's another uh, connection between number theory and geometry. Because that, that distribution corresponds to some unknown cut plus projection. You know what, I, I think, I think you, yeah, you, you brought up a good point. Uh, that, that paper that I sent you, uh, I guess it was Michael Bach. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You, you guys are friends with him, but they phrase uh, they phrase the tiling in terms of an operator on a certain torus, mm. the eight torus. Right. So these tori, like if you disc discretize a torus, right, then that's essentially you have an elliptic curve. Yeah. Of as a, a special case. So these higher dimensional tori, if you discretize it, and then you project down, you're getting these quasi crystals. Yeah. From that, from that equation. Right. So the torus, you have a discrete torus, you project down, and that's the relationship. So you know how if you project um, an, N, an N sphere greater than, if you, if, if you project something of a fibered N sphere mm, that's greater than a, than a two sphere, you get uh, tor toroidal shapes. The familiar one is the vibration of the three sphere to R3. R3. Uh, but that means that if you project the Gossett polytope with its discretized set of um, fibers to 4D, maybe you also get a four dimensional uh, toroid, right? Made of the fibers, right? The one spheres. In other words, you project mm -hmm. a, a, a. No, the fibers are three spheres. Uh, you cannot decompose mm -hmm. that in. S7, the fibers are three oh, spheres. Oh, yes. S, S yeah, but here's the thing. With on E8, on the... you can place one spheres. So you can discretize E8 on, by running a one sphere around every coincident set of the vertices, and then you get a family, a small family of, of one spheres in eight dimensions, though. Yeah. And then when you project those small set of one spheres to 4D, they're going to have to get rearranged. They're going to have to get rearranged in the projection. They'll get all gnarly, but they won't break. They'll stay. They'll stay together. And that gnarliness under projection is going to create maybe something analogous to the projection of a discretized uh, three sphere to R three. Yeah, the gossip. So I guess that the paper that I mentioned, uh, instead of using the gossip, instead we look at the eight torus. So they're dual to each other. Okay. So you're right. Yeah. yeah, it'll work, and, and, but the reason they use the torus, uh, we have to study the paper a little more, is because it has to do with the cut window. Okay. So it's giving you this periodic... Oh, in Baki's paper? Yeah. Uh -huh. So we're, uh, you have this trans translation, right? But if you cut it off so that you translate all the way to the boundary, it just loops back. Right. So they were, they were claiming that the, the um, studying solutions over the torus... Is, is a better way to go when you're, yeah. when you're doing these crystals. Yeah. You're talking about like your shift factor, right. you're going from zero to yeah, one. Yeah, like and it's, there's an AX plus T equals yeah. X. So yeah. now we... That's, that's the, <laughs> the toroidal way of looking at it. We, we go back from the torus to the sphere. <laughs> go, the Torah. So, okay. <laughs> so you masterize what uh, we have seen with circles in 2D. So we do the same with spheres. Uh, S2 in 3D with the equation x2 plus y2 plus z2 equals 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So for example, uh, for 3, each one, each one would, will be a 1. So we have 8 solutions. Uh, here we have 6 solutions because only one could be a, a 2 and the other should be 0. But then there is combinatoric and sign six solution for five then we can mix like before one and two at the square it will make one and four but because we have three dimension we will also have a zero who will circulate so we have more combinatoric solution in fact 24 solutions so it looks that we have more solutions more dimensions but uh, here is the simple uh, function in Mathematica to give you the number of solutions, named squares R. 6, 12, 8, 6, 24, uh, 24 for 6, and then 0 for 7. So 
for 7, x1, x2 plus y2 plus z2 equals 7 has no solution. Because it's a prime, right? In, in the number. Is that, that's, is that because it's a prime? No. No, no. The other uh, prime numbers. We, but we have Eight, also nine, the reason, ten, but 11, you will see right. that the reason is now <coughs> more complicated. Uh, so, so, Gauss has worked on this in 3D and has shown one partial solution. So, only in the case where n, the number which is the square radius, is square free. So this is a, it is not a multiple of a square. So for example, no, 9 is not working, 4 is not working, 18 is not working, but 17 is working, or 2 times 3 times 5 is working. So for example, for, but it should not be a, a multiple of a, a square. So for all these numbers, which are also greater than 4, then he has a, a formula that uh, R3 of n, which is uh, this number here, the number of squares, of solution of the equation. For example, if n is congruent to 3 modulo 8, will be 24 times h of minus n, and I will say what, what is h function. And if n is congruent to 7 modulo 8, then it's 0. So this is uh, an answer to your uh, uh, your uh, hypothesis. Uh, it's because it's 7, but it's uh, because it's 7 modulo 8 and it is square free. For all these numbers, then uh, there is no solution for this equation. And for the, all the other numbers, there is solution. But for the square free number, we have to use other mathematics. And then what is the h of n, which is, uh, uh, in fact, the, f the class number, the field class number, it's a function of uh, number theory, which is defined from this function ln of 1, which is a Dirichlet L theory related to the zeta, fu to the zeta function. So this is a Dirichlet L theory, and uh, kappa of n is a Dirichlet structure constant. So our dear Dirichlet is here, <laughs> again. <laughs> and, uh, but in fact, the numbers that you compute are not very complicated. It's, uh, it's here. This function, h of n, can be computed by Mathematica with number, field class number, and then you have to take the square root of the minus n here, and it's 1, 1, 1, 1 for these numbers. Uh, which can be checked with uh, uh, with a list that, that I had. So and uh, so in three dimension, it's more complicated. But in three D is where the golden ratio comes in uh, through the Dirichlet integers. No, the golden ratio, I, I will show just after where it comes, but it's uh, for all dimensions, the golden ratio. You can have it in 2D, okay. 3D, 4D. It doesn't but depend basically it you're, you're on the Basically, you're getting dimension. the golden ratio and number theory uh, and apparently a, what I think is a quasi-crystal all from just putting circles on, on Z lattices. Y yes, except that... Here, the golden ratio, I will add it by hand. And my justification is that it comes from E8, or you can justify it. But you didn't add it by hand with the Dirichlet series. Uh, yes, but the Dirichlet L series is something different. It's not the golden ratio. This is a, another mathematical invention of Dirichlet. Oh, I see. Ma I see. Linked to Riemann. And oh, yes. It, it's not me who named this yes. Dirichlet. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, so, but. With, uh, with three dimensions, we still have this function. So in fact, this is this function that we are generally using. And so I give some reference. Now we will go to four dimension. Uh, so we can, uh, we kind of recognize uh, the 24 cell vertices here <laughs> for two. Uh, for one, this is uh, also a polytop. And for three, for example, w we have all these variations where one number is zero and the other are all one. So it's projections of uh, cubes. Uh, 
It's a birectified fourplex. Yes. And, and Ray, is this, so this would follow two, four, eight, you know, 16, so it's the binomial expansion. In other words, your, your two-dimensional case was multiples of two, and then four was, wait, mo wait, wait. Uh, you wanted to see it again? No, Sorry. Well, you had, uh, okay. well, you have, you know, all multiples of eight, right? And the previous mm -hmm. one was, uh, well, previous one was multiples of six in 3D, and the previous one of that was multiples of four. Okay, so it goes by two. So it goes four, four, six. So, oh, okay. yes, and then this is the series, 8, 24, 32, uh, yeah. 144 here again. Yeah. And now there is no zero in the series. So the solution for a four dimension, there is always a solution. And this is a theorem, named the theorem of four square by Lagrange. Uh, and also uh, by Jacobi, there is a similar theorem. So Ray, if you take the AED series based on 60 degree angles instead of the 90 degree angles Z series, um, you'll get, you can use the same form and you'd get some uh, similar looking result, but, but different. Oh, yes, right? by using uh, the, the other grid. Like the, the A, yeah, grid. you just use the A series, mm -hmm. you know, A2, A3, and you'd have the same, I, I, I suppose. With circles, you, yes, that's, yeah. that's a you have good the same idea, we, we have to. Los Angeles Chargers, Los Angeles. I do not, I did not touch it. <laughs> Uh, yes, it's a good idea of... Uh, because then you can go up, you can start three. using our lattices like the, you know, the, the A3 and you can, A, you know, and the D6 and E8 and whatnot, and we can see if that is a helpful... Ah, but for D and E, uh, I get this from here. It's just the A series which is different, because the D series is a subset of the Z, and the E series, the number, the lattice is also a sub lattice of the Z lattice. No, I don't think so. You're yes, this is working for all those. This I, is I, I, including I, I, the D and the E, but they not can the be a. sub lattice of each other. I know they can, but so can A. Meaning A, A, E, D are in one family, which are all made of two dimensional facets as two simply C's, whereas the Z series is quite different. It's fundamental angle is 90 degrees all the way up. Ah, so, yes, so I the, the I, A series, I can have it but I have to be in a higher dimensional space. For example, uh, I have to add a dimension right. in my coordinate system, and then uh, I can apply this kind of theorem to the, right. to the A series. But yes, in other words, you can truth. relate the Z lattice to the A as well, meaning... Yes, yes, but, yes, but, but there of, uh, with a, a different dimension. In fact, it's the Z5 no, is dimension. to the A5, same dimension. Same dimension. In 3D, it's easy. Uh, in, 3D. In, in other, in higher dimension, right. maybe it's more complicated. Maybe it's easier to go we one, haven't, we haven't one worked, dimension above. Yeah, we haven't worked it out in other dimensions, but we can tell you for sure that we know, we know that, um, for example, that um, you can generate the, F, the A3 lattice FCC with two copies but That's of, also D3, so it's... Yeah. It, you can, you can generate, okay, it is D3, yeah. yeah. But you can generate uh, Z3 with two copies of, um, of A3, mm -hmm. which, which equals D3, but... Yes, anyway, yes so that's clear. Yeah. So then we, we have another uh, formula from uh, Jacobi for R4, which is quite simple again. So the, we remember that the formula for three was very complicated. Uh, but for 4, it's uh, also the sum of dividers except the multiples of 4. So you can write this, R4 of n, for example, uh, 24 for n equals uh, 2, is 8 times the sum of divider of n, which are not, divider, uh, which are not uh, divide, uh, multiples of 4. Uh, so you just take the list of dividers and you remove some of them and you sum and you multiply by 8 here. And you can also write this in another way just by saying that sigma of n is the sum of divider of n. This is a standard function in number theory. And then th my function, the number of vertex, is r4 of n is 8 times sigma of n minus 32 times sigma of n n over 4, this is to remove the point which are multiple of 4, uh, by saying that if n is not divi divisible by 4, then this is 0. There is no. 
uh, and of, then we can see that, for example, if p is a prime, the R4 of p is 8 times p plus 1. So I have a direct formula in the case that the square radius is a prime number one of the results from number theory. And then I can have many other. And this is linking the theta series for the lattice as a modular form that, uh, as uh, Mike uh, said, and uh, it's also linked to Eisenstein's theories. Um, this formula is still working. It works also in six dimensions. But now that we masterize this into four dimensions, I will apply uh, my new ID to this, because this is quite simple, but uh, already powerful. But then I go back from some slides, and I will try to complexify uh, the algebra in some way, uh, just by using a quadratic extension of the algebra. So when I will have a, a sum of x, y, z, w, and compute the the square, for example, in 4D. Or you can tilt it for tilt it for the camera. Just a little bit, yeah. 4D. So my equation with we x2 plus y2 plus z2 plus w2 equals, for example, n. Uh, so this is the equation of a sphere in four-dimensional uh, Euclidean space. And then we will go to an algebraic space here where uh, it's x plus psi y square plus z plus psi w square equals also something. Mm. You mean Y or two or Z? <laughs> what is psi? Z is like a two. <laughs> it's a Z. Yeah, put the little. Are put you something putting in the middle? In the middle. Give us a little love in the middle. There we go. Yeah. This is bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. So this is a quadratic ring. Uh, it's a generalization of Dirichlet integer. So, for example, it's just the number which are a plus b psi, where a and b uh, are integer, and psi is a number. And we want this to be closed under addition and multiplication. So, we need to have an equation for psi, and for example, an equation of seg second degree, so a polynomial of second order of psi should be uh, null. So for example, psi p2, which is a polynomial of second degree of psi, I can choose psi 2 plus 1. Then if I have the equation psi 2 plus 1 equals 0, psi equals i, the imaginary number, or uh, minus i. Then with psi here equals uh, i, I have just the complex number. So this is why it's a kind of complex ex extension of z. But I can choose another polynomial. For example, this one, psi, p2 of psi equals psi2 minus psi minus 1 equals 0. So re you recognize this equation. What are the solution for psi? That's a golden right. ratio, right? Yes, a golden ratio, psi equals 5 or my minus 1 over 5. Wow. So, and this, the number z plus psi z, where psi is 5, this is our uh, Dirichlet integer. Huh. Uh, so, by doing this, I make a correspondence between this set of points, uh, the solution of the circles in uh, n-dimensional spheres uh, and grids with uh, similar uh, spheres uh, from Dirichlet integer in a space which is half of the dimension. So my uh, four-dimensional x, y, z, w solutions, where x, y, z, w are integer, will give x, x plus psi y, uh, which is a new coordinate, for example, uh, big x, 
and this is big Y. Sorry, don't cover it, Oops. And then it gives me an equation in, a, in two dimension. But then I have a small, here it's no more N here, because for example, uh, X plus Psi Y, because Psi has this equation is solution of a polynome, I can eliminate Psi 2, but I cannot necessarily eliminate Psi. So it will give a solution which will be uh, an extended Dirichlet integer, P plus Q Psi, the square radius. So is this, uh, uh, you change the norm? Yes. You could interpret a change in the norm. And yes. If you go from 8D, you apply this to 8D to 4D, mm -hmm. you have the octonians to that cosine. I have the same vectors yeah. with integer coordinates, so in isomorphism, but I just change the norm. Yes. And so I can do this with uh, any psi. This is, uh, there is a lot of stuff uh, available on this algebraic extension, and there is some value which are better than others. But the better, the best value is phi. This is also well known. So we will, but we could even use, uh, extend this to cubic ring, for example, by using a polynome which is no more uh, of degree two, but of degree C, three. For example, uh, uh, then we will have three numbers, A plus B psi plus C psi two. And then we can take, for example, uh, the, the third root of unit, uh, exponential of 2 i pi divided by 3, which could also be represented as a quaternion, 1 half of minus 1 plus i plus j plus k, that we know in the 24 cell. Uh, uh, and this has the equation p3 of uh, psi is psi cubed minus 1 equals 1. So we can go to higher dimension also, but the most interesting case are i, the complex number, and phi, the Dirichlet integer. So now we will work with this, and, and I will show you this on the next slide. And it can work, so for everything we have seen uh, in the other slide, then you can imagine then, then x and y, it's, uh, it's just a one-dimensional Dirichlet integer, x plus phi y. And 3D doesn't work. I need a, an even dimension. So 4D is interesting. It will be the plane. And in 6D, 6D is what I will really exploit. Will be will give the QSN and uh, the Amman tiling and the D6 tiling. Uh, and HD will give the Elzer Sloan quasi crystal. So then. This figure is very important. Oh, I don't go. This is the shape. Oops. Oh. It's a now the mouse is no more working. It was working yeah. before, but. Uh, I yeah, I don't know it. why it does that. You change it. <laughs> no. <laughs> so this whole thing is mathematical. Yeah, yes. it's the front end of mathematics of being weird. I just repaired the mouse before my presentation, but now, okay, I cannot really turn it. But this is a good viewpoint, so I don't turn it more. It's a pizza. It's a pizza, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and uh, you've tied in pizza <laughs> to the whole thing. So if I go from the, from the bottom, here I have uh, n equals 1. And I am in... Uh, uh, four dimension, yes. Uh, no, six dimension. So n equals one. Here I have the solution of the equation uh, in 6D. Uh, uh, maybe I have to write this. In 6D. Um, so in fact, it is this, this equation. Uh, so I prefer to write this x plus phi, for example x prime square plus y plus phi y prime square plus z plus phi z prime square equals p plus q 
phi. And I have another equation linked, which is x2 plus x prime 2 plus y2 plus y prime 2 plus z2 plus z prime 2 equals uh, p, because this is integer. So this case where q equals 0 is this uh, slice of my graph. This, the bottom, is p equals 1. The next is p equals 2. After, p equals 3. And here, you can see that for the p equals 2, it is uh, red here. What? Red. It is red. It oh. is magenta. It is not the same color. Oh. And the height, which is represented, is the number of solution yeah. of the six-dimensional equation. And why I put this for 2 and this for 8 uh, in specific color? Because this is the work I presented maybe one year ago about the Dirichlet sphere. So when this, when I solve, when this is equal to this, if, if I write that these two equations are the same, then uh, uh, here I get the cube octahedron. In fact, the, the, 12, the solution, I have 12 solutions which are uh, the vertice of a cube octahedron for the radius 2, and for the radius 8, uh, the square radius 8, uh, I get the 60 solution. Uh, in fact, I get 108 solution. Uh, but this is the 60 solution of the 20 group plus the 20 group rotated by 90 degrees. Wait a minute. How are you getting a 20 group from <laughs> placing circles on the point. Well, yes. but this why do you think it's 60? Because the mm. logical 60 is the Buckminster Fullerene. That's the logical solid, the 60 uh, as, the, as, the, uh, as the 20 group. I highly doubt that. No, the solution of the equation gives uh, exactly 108. It's exactly the 60 vertices. Of the 20 group? Mm -hmm. and, not, and not the 60 vertices of the, of the Buckminster Fullerene? No. It Why? What, what, wait. Why does it have to be? Wait a minute. You're getting the 60 points of the Cartesian coordinates of, of the cube octahedron 5 compound yes. from this? Yes. You, 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 you know on for the first time. <laughs> yes, talk about this long time I ago. tried to put this in our paper on the QSN, but uh, it was difficult. Well, <laughs> it was not explained well enough. So. It's not expected. <laughs> but, yeah, you, you got to go back to, we're mapping the shells. Right. So that's, it's, wow. it's going to happen. So this is tying in number theory, prime, prime number theory in general, because of the because of the integer lattice, then prime number theory, and then the freaking QSN, mm -hmm. which results the 20 which group. relates to the compounding. <laughs> twenty group, yeah, twenty group. I know, but yeah. the twenty group is like this way to uh, induce or it tells you a lot about the QSN. It's a very particular object. Wow, mm -hmm. that's cool. Yeah. And pizza, <laughs> and it ties in pizza. Uh, <laughs> so. Yes, yes. <laughs> and then the the QSN is there. Because this other dimension is when I am when the I am no more on the six six dimensional sphere, but uh, I, I have also a golden part p a q. But what is interesting is that if I in, in fact I, I can compute all the solution of this equation, all the integer, then I can reinject all this solution here. Uh, and compute the, the, the new norm. And for some of them, the new norm is the same than the old norm, which are this one here in the middle, uh, which generates the 20 group. But for others, the norm has also an, uh, a golden part, which is represented in this uh, x axis. Ray, I'm sorry. Did you say that the 20 group is in here? The, I'm, I'm sorry, the QSN, uh, not just the 20? Well, no, he said both, QSN. Both are here, yes. QSN, the whole QSN. The, so the 20 group emerged quite by, by himself. At first, and then first. later the whole the, QSN. The QSN is there because 
I will explain that all the uh, structure based on the icosahedrally symmetric uh, symmetry uh, should be there. But the QSN is there, and I will show that also in diverse, uh, so the, they are all there somewhere. They cannot not be there. Right, in and fact, just to repeat all you, yeah. so all you did is just use this integer lattice D6, and then you put a sequential series of um, three of five spheres, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. it, sub, inscribing each set of points at each radius. Mm -hmm. And then from that process that you just took us through, you get the QSN. Yes. Huh. I, I still I still am not clear on if the QSN is still there. You said it should it, be there. This QSN is a subset of this, but it is there. Yes, I, I, I have the proof. Okay. Then okay. the difficulty is to find the function who select which one of all oh, these numbers are in the, the, numbers. the QSN. My yeah, so my, this is the whole this is the whole idea of um, the symbolism of the flower of life because the flower of life is taking an irrational kind of number and placing it upon an integer lattice as the as the tiling on uh, you know on a two right the hexagonal lattice. I mean, just saying that an integer lattice, whether it's a cubic series or or an a series. Mm -hmm is based on, you know, there's nothing irrational implied, but when you combine it with the circle, then all of a sudden everything changes, and that's symbolized by the flower of life. Oh, all mm -hmm. that is is just circles placed around every triangle in the, in the A2 lattice. And, and the simplest way possible to derive the golden ratio with geometry is just to take the simplest possible two-dimensional object, the two simplex, and then put the infinite dimensional regular polytope, uh, po polygon, which is the circle, and then you superimpose them, and there is where you generate the golden ratio as you put a line through the. Uh, Aren't these results the center, right? in, the, in the paper uh, with you ratio. and Amrik? The no, this is in the paper with, uh, with you. you can actually but it the was. Paper. Mm. No. It, it well, not with Amrik. Mm. Not? No. It didn't include this part? I saw no. they included this part. Oh, okay. No, no, no. Okay. He included something else, but not this. Oh, okay. uh, so what is interesting is that this is uh, bounded. So the, the golden part for each radius is bounded, and I have the formula to give these bounds. So the mean, uh, the, the, the maximum is here is easy to compute for n, it's n plus uh, the integer part of n phi times phi. So for big value, it's like 1 plus phi 2 times n. This is this compared to this. And the minimum is n plus n minus this integer part of n times phi times phi. And the mean is negative. Uh, no, the mean is Sorry, the mean is never negative because this is a value for a square root. Uh, no, the mean, uh, yes, the mean, the mean is negative here, but the sum p plus q phi is always positive. And uh, so this is a way of classifying all the shelling of uh, a quasi crystal in any dimension classified by the, the size of the shelling, and then you classify the, you have a sub shell of each shell for the different possibility for the golden part, which is also represented by an integer. And what is strange is that for the QSN, we are near the maximum, but not at the maximum. And then in this diagram, I will classify every quasi-crystal known, I begin to, what are the pattern for the num for the shell, the number that, that, that they're QSN? I know it's a... Yes, I, I am studying this. Uh, oh, okay. uh, there are, these patterns are very interesting. For in some of them, it's multiple of... Uh, there, there should be 14 mo modulo. There is 14, 26. I don't have this in, I saw in my head. I you said it's 8, like which is squared to, to the mm. something. So now I have some slide to to show some results on, s on the QSN. 
Ray, are you going to be able to comment on how you think this is going to help us? I expect it to help us, yes. by the way, but I don't have any intuitions how. But um, to me, this is really deep and unexpected. How, how, how might we exploit this? Maybe somebody else has an answer. Yeah, mm -hmm. like, as far as the physics, this, you could relate this to the thermodynamics. Okay. Yeah, these modular forms. Okay. So that, that would be a, right. an eventual. For discretized, you know, quantum therm code theoretic thermodynamics. Yeah. Right? Huh. It's give, it gives a, us a basis for a classification of every uh, quasi-crystalline structure with a five-fold symmetry, which express naturally in Dirichlet integer coordinates in any uh, phase. So in, this in is going to help to map QSN with yes, the... To map all this, yes, with in that. 3D. Okay. I can, and I can use it the same in 4D and in, 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 and in 2D. Okay. Because, uh, and this is the same graph, I, uh, I have no problem with dimension. It will just be that the number of uh, solution will increase with the dimension. And here I represented the log of the number of solution. Okay. So, uh, Ray, it reminds me of the deep and unexpected solution to the convergence of the Riemann zeta function, which it's just the integers. Like if you look at the Riemann, it's just taking one, two, three, four, five, and then, and then basically just inverting each one, adding them, but putting a power yeah. of two on each one before you do that. So it's really just a manipulation of the integers, foundation of number theory, and then it terminates unexpectedly at first mm. with a golden ratio value. Right. Yeah. Uh, do you want to write? Do you know by heart the the termination number? I think it's golden ratio over s like with a six or something. It's just an unexpected thing to see pi so perfectly show up in five, some no, uh, simple manipulation of the integers, like an I additive. Think it's mm. pi, uh, pi to the pi pi mm. over six pi to the pi yeah, to the three over six. six. There's a way to relate this. Uh, pi two over six. No. The yeah. Something yes. Simple. Yeah, zeta of two. Yes. The, the oh, zeta yeah. function. And also his formalism here, if you take it to 24 dimensions, right? That's, yeah. And you have X, Y, Z, W increasing, one, two, three, right? You plug in values. Yeah. Uh, the only solution that, that you get that, that where the, the right. N is a, is, a, is a power, right. two, right. is 70. And they use that for the leech lattice. Is that in the Kabbalah? Uh, oh. <laughs> why 24 dimensions? No, 70. Oh, that's 20. <laughs> we like, so Ray, just, just to make my point, can you just write down the first two, you know, just write down the form of the Zeta series. Oh, it's this here? Well, no, I mean you did 1 over 2 squared, meaning oh, the Zeta series the is so... The sum of the inverse of the I square. Think, I think I'm going to talk when we come back. Cool. Relating this yeah. back to the uh, leech lattice. Oh, good. And the Zeta series. One right, so plus just, one half plus one fourth plus one nine. Right, the zeta theories is just a real super simple way to to explore uh, the counting numbers, right? The integers, and with all of them without leaving anything out, and then it terminates at that beautiful equation phi squared over six, which is yeah. funny because that's a transcendental number. And so I have just some slides. <laughs> this is really rich. This is, wor this is good stuff, Ray. So I really yeah. appreciate yeah. because uh, I was believing that you will need uh, a lot of the rows to appreciate the algebra. I don't need that damn rose <laughs> No, at all. and no, we will have some geometry. No, he, he explained this before. So oh, I know, did, I, I this helped. Ray, you filled my heart with love, just like the oh. rose. <laughs> <laughs> So then you win some <laughs> polyhedron. Oh, nice. <laughs> Level up. So this is the computation of the QSN. But this is exactly not the QSN. This is the Fibonacci Icosa grid. Mm. In fact, uh, it's uh, by using the 10 vectors for the 10 plane and taking all the intersection three by three by uh, spacing with Fibonacci chain all the plane and having the center. Right. So but that generates the QSN. That, so they're yes, but they, this yeah. is the first step because, in fact, that generate more vertices than we we have because the second step is and to keep cross. only the tetrahedron. Mm -hmm. So first we generate a many vertices. This one, uh, for example, uh, 
in my small size, I generate quite one million. And we can see the first. But then some of them will be eliminated from the real uh, QSN that I will show just after because they don't belong to any tetrahedron. Well, there are edge crossings, there are some crossings. Oh. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so they are useful too, yeah. Well, some, oh, hold on. Because so, what is interesting yeah. is that with this one, I have some perfect Fibonacci chain. Yeah. But when I eliminate some, then I have Fibonacci chain where I have some L plus S because right. I removed like uh, some partial deflation. So I just want to comment on this because I, mm -hmm. I know a little bit about this from our study uh, two years ago. So in the set of the edge crossing points in the QSN, you have, what, you have a kind of aperiodic series where you'll basically have an edge crossing set that is a, a regular or semi-regular polytope, which is nice, group theoretically, and then you'll go through trash, crump, 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 trash, and then boom, you'll hit another mm -hmm. edge crossing set that's a semi-regular polytope uh, or regular polytope, and then you go more, boom, 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 more, tr more noise, right? So it, it, and it's a, there's a rhythm, there's an aperiodic rhythm to that pattern Yes. Of, of noise, noise, boom, noise, 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 and This boom. is what I want to explore mm -hmm. with a number theory. Mm -hmm. So now more the, this theory, mm -hmm. which are the, the series uh, related now also to uh, a golden part, mm -hmm. not only this. So we have well-known formula in this case, but not in this case, but this is mm -hmm. an extension. And uh, so I computed, for example, for each of them, the square, um, the, the, the square radius. And uh, for example, here, the smaller, here I represented just the, the, the nine first uh, shells. Uh, so the smaller is an icosi dodecahedron and uh, at a radius uh, 12, comma 36, which is in, in, in fact the square radius is 800 minus uh, 405. Oh. And there is 30 vertices. And you see that here we get an icosahedron. This is my first icosahedron. But it will disappear uh, in the QSN, this one, because uh, uh, it's not a member of, uh, tet of tetrahedron. Yeah, but it's in the space tetrahedron. filling regime of the QSN. And I always say we have to respect both regimes because yes, they, want, they right, both might yes, be right. useful for us. This is a, a more complete uh, regime. So it is there. This is the first. And, um, um, and this one, or this, uh, is that a 20, is that a larger? One, one is a 20 group also, but um, no, I'm not more sure if it's this one or this one. one, I will. Sh uh, and then the blue the one. Blue one. The yeah, uh, and then Ray, mm -hmm. uh, you'd notice perhaps that the, the first blue one Yes. Is uh, seems to be a rhombic triacontahedron, one of the Archimedean solids. The first blue one on your list. No, no that's not blue. No, no, no it's no. not. It's that not. It has a little five uh, thing there. Oh, oh, yeah. Cyan, yeah. there's the dark yeah. cyan. No, I no, no, I'm wrong. Totally wrong. Yeah, I should see. Okay, that. so Pentagon. I have other. I have other. So then, I extracted. Uh, um, so it tends towards spheres. Icosahedral, because you wanted to find the icosahedral, so. Uh, in fact, all no, this no, no, is no, no, I'll the hedron for, for 20 group centers. Ah, okay, I will have it yeah. too. <laughs> <laughs> but I believe, in fact, this idea of icosahedron, I integrated it to say this is a very good criteria of comparison between different structures. To look where the icosahedron air, where the icosido decahedron, where the right. decahedron, right. at which orbit they are, and then when we have different exactly. structures, we can know exactly. if one is the same they're as the phases. other. Or like if they're phases. Like yeah, they're they're like phases that yes. are very important, hmm. and th those phases are occurring as a quasi-crystal and directly integer um, spacing as R. So now it's a part of our tool to analyze. Yeah. Uh, to simplify. All this, yes. So then, effectively, I get a, a lot of uh, icosahedron. It's like planets. Right, that, that's for sure you get that icosahedron because of the pentamplans. Yes. This, this is obvious, like the 20 group centers, uh, you know. Oh, OK. In 20 group centers, yeah. I have one too. OK. <laughs> uh, so here, and in some cases, the icosahedron is alone. And in other cases, it is uh, lost uh, somewhere uh, yeah. with other things. 
um, I made the same uh, study for icosy dodecahedron and also uh, one of them it is alone in the smallest and in all the other I have uh, ID but uh, mixed with other uh, points. Then I study the real QSN, so, uh, which I named the tetraedral vertex. From the set of points that I got from the multigrid, then I keep only the ones which are part of uh, a tetra regular tetraedron, okay. which is for me really the QSN possibility mm -hmm. space, but the other are in a, an extended possibility. So then uh, the first is the 20 group. The, the first orbit here, uh, which was also in the other before you, you, you have seen it. And then, uh, so we have other uh, uh, shells. So. so, Ray, um, one way that I look at this, because uh, when we studied this two years ago, is um, you can kind of look at them in some sense like jitterbug transforms where. At, you see those pentagons in the in like you'll have ugly ones right like this one here is an ugly one uh, because the pentagon is not in the right ratio so what happens is you get um, rectangles and that's a 20 group one why is it ugly uh, if that's a 20 group uh, well I don't think that's a 20 that's not a 20 group uh, uh, maybe it, oh yeah 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 no, no. but <laughs> But okay, but my point is, what happens is you, you can, if you w animated these, you'd watch these discrete phases, which are like these, you could do it with a projective transformation where you'd see this start to converge, these points as you rotate it would get closer and closer and then boom, they would converge or they can go apart and get to a pentagon that's the right size to make it a semi-regular polytope and then the stuff in between you can kind of cast out because it's not the phases that hit, you know, but it's like, I see this as these, can, you can relate it, you can relate it to, ro to, pro to basically um, projections where you're, uh, you know, translating your window and then you'll get nice, you know, you'll get ones where the, where at different s is discrete steps of the translation where the pentagons change size and then they come, into, they come in and then they start going out again. So it's like a breathing. They come in and then mm -hmm. they go out to create this whole series. So after I, I have searched uh, in the QSN for the icosahedron in the orbit, so I found some. Uh, icosidodecahedron, there is. Um, and now uh, it's the tetrahedron centers. So this part, this combined uh, quasi-crystal derived from the QSN. Uh, we have a dodecahedron now in the middle. And uh, uh, and 20 group center because in fact, we have no icosahedron and no uh, icosidodecahedron in the 20 group uh, in the tetrahedron center. Now the 20 group center, so naturally mm -hmm. the first orbit is uh, icosidodecahedron and we what? have several. Wow. Can you so repeat you said that there is no icosahedron here? You, no, what, can you repeat the sentence where you said we have no something in the 20 group centers? Repeat that? Yes, it, no, no, no. In the in a tetrahedron center, yes. this slide, yes. tetrahedron center, okay. We have dodecahedron, but we have no icosahedron, and we have no icosidodecahedron. Oh, I sh do you think that's true? Tetrahedron center? Yeah, yes. you draw lines from tetrahedron centroid to tetrahedron centroid, right? If, if that's what you're saying, you should get uh, all uh, three. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, 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 definitely not. It depends on what, what it is. Actually, the icosahedron and dodecahedron don't actually always come together. And not because of the diagonal as well. well. I didn't say they come together, but I'm saying if you draw your logical near neighbor distances from oh, centroid no, no. to this is this is for concentric ones. Oh. Like each shell. Okay, so di okay. Yeah, it's a okay. different thing. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. So you said <laughs> there is a causahedron for twenty group centers. Well, okay, I, I need to see the 20 group at, the, uh, at each vertex. Yes, because it, it is at a very quite big radius, so probably you didn't head in your data set. Uh, 
Huh? You know, but, but yeah. Ray, but please, mm -hmm. I need the 20 group literally there. Okay, I will represent. They're <laughs> so we small. Know that, <laughs> that's, no, be, not just see just them. because uh, logically, I don't think it's there. Just because, just as you know, there is no acasahedron or dodecahedron at the 20 group centers. It's it's the same kind of a reason. I feel like there shouldn't be a cosihedron here. Uh, but there. Yeah, yeah but, but you'll okay, show you'll show her. But, but you will show me uh, that. Okay. So that it's more detail. So Ray, hold on. So, 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 Ray, so, uh, so we have a dodecahedra at twenty group <coughs> centers in the QSN. Uh, yes. And we have now, I call a, the according to you, thing. which I believe you, twenty group. Uh, 20 um, um, icosahedra. I yeah, believe we have dodecahedron. Dodecahedron, icosahedron, yeah. dodecahedron, a lot of them. Uh -huh. Icosahedron, I still... You have to be shown, I know. But if that's the case, then that's very nice because that's the full set. Those are the three. Mm. Uh, that's the two platonic solids and one Archimedean solid that form, define your kind of uh, H3 symmetric building blocks of the 36 vertex type QC, which is the one you get by projecting E8 according to the same cut window, the same projector that gives you Elster Sloan. When you go, when you skip 4D and go straight to 3D, you get those three shapes: the, yes. the dodecahedron, icosahedron, mm -hmm. and icosahedodecahedron. And effectively, in the small orbit, they are hidden. So that's why I said to you that it was not easy to see them because they are hidden. But at uh, uh, enough big radius, then it's not hidden, it's alone. Mm. But I believe that here it's important to... Uh, what is important is to have the icosahedron yeah, this as is a, a subset of the... This is uh, what, it, uh, what in my memory, I remember I saw something like icosahedron before, but mixed with another shape. Mm -hmm. but, but, but still, you know, when I go, go and check it, it's, it's almost like you know, this five-fold cone is forever going to be just a cone. That's never, yeah, maybe when the cone is just like big enough and all of a sudden the 20 group can fall into it, I don't know. I'm mean, not saying absolute, absolutely that, that it's, you know, I, I feel like I proved that it shouldn't be there, but I just like, maybe I just want to see with my Fong, eyes. Could the, trap, could the trap in the logic be that when you think about the cone, uh, it, it may be incomplete because you have to think about it as a quasi-crystal, not just one. Yeah, I, I know. I have yeah. to consider that. Yeah. yeah. And so the, my next slide is uh, I call the dodecahedral, but this you was already knowing uh, that's there. So that's all for now. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so Ray, I just want to compliment you because you went way beyond the scope of the problem, but in a, but in a helpful way. Mm -hmm. Like in other words, yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you didn't spend so much time in a not helpful way because you went so deep into this. It's very, very, yeah, very... But the still, it's yeah. not the original problem. But does like it answer? What you were thinking. But does it end? Does it, uh, no, you were trying to map literal the literal point to point like tetrahedron to tetrahedron that kind of stuff oh you mean between the, the space filling and the nut but yeah. remember i gave up on that okay you, okay you, that's you, good yeah. because because yeah. i wanted to make sure <laughs> you're satisfied with that no, no, you <laughs> talked me out of that by logic in uh -huh. the past okay. and then it just became a, dif uh, a yeah. different yeah i just yeah. wanted to yeah. make sure you know once after the presentation yeah. we, we can cross out some yeah. problems but i did not expect this connection oh, it is to written do to somewhere. i did not he, expect he this he has yeah. this long time you can ago. i know i just didn't comprehend it was just in his four. accent verbally and i needed to I see mean, yes, visuals and to get it because <laughs> just saying it, it sometimes i get it if you say it but i didn't yeah, but at, but at that enough? time he was only he only went to the first layer. I was like, you have to go further, and to make it more complete. Like why this particular layer? You see this. So he didn't. And then so for the QSM paper, I asked him to do to go a little bit further so we can have more yeah. things. But he went on went to the yeah. physics oh, yeah, and yeah. all that thing. I'd say Ray gets an A plus if this was a. <laughs> if you were getting a grade, <laughs> you would be A plus. Senior seminar. Yeah. <laughs> What if many discoveries in history have been missed because someone didn't understand someone's accent? You know? <laughs> right, <laughs> right, right. You right. get a B. <laughs> 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 <laughs>